The Effects of Sugar on Human Health and the Urban Environment by Peyton Davis. You're probably wondering what sugar has to do with urban planning. So first, let's talk about what sugar is and how it affects the individual who consumes it. What is sugar? Sugar is a molecule that occurs naturally. It's found in ripe fruit, it's found in dairy products, and it's found in root crops. Sugar is an energy source. Plants create simple sugars through photosynthesis. You can see here by the little infographic that uh, H2O and CO2 interact with light in the chloroplast of the cell and the little red circle pops out some sugar. So it's a natural process that is started at the molecular level within a uh, plant tissue. Flowering plants evolved to create excess sugar in the form of nectar. And this, this surplus sugar meant that plants could get creative, very much like human civilization where agriculture created a, a surplus of calories. When plants had a surplus of calories, they incorporated other forms of biological life to do the work of reproduction for them. So nectar evolved as a positive reinforcement mechanism for animal life. Insects eat nectar and inadvertently pollinate the flowers, and the pollinated flowers then mature in fruit with seeds of the next generation. You can see the little bee is uh, taking a drink of the, of the nectar and just getting absolutely covered in the pollen from the flower. And that bee is going to take it to the next flower and has no idea that it's participating in this process. And the same principle applies to the fruits. So fructose in fruit evolved as a positive reinforcement for larger animals to disperse seeds, like this little monkey, or like birds. Um, they either eat the fruit and drop the seeds, or they consume the seeds and then um, drop them somewhere else. And so the animals are rewarded with sugar for participating in plant production. And uh, there's a little info graphic on that. Sugar has evolved to be addictive. Studies show that when an individual consumes sugar, dopamine is released through the same neural pathways as addictive substances. The same parts of the brain light up for nicotine, for methamphetamine, and caffeine as well. Humans don't need sugar in their diet. There is absolutely zero nutritional benefit. There's no vitamins or minerals. There's no probiotics for gut health. There's no antioxidants or anti-inflammatories. It is strictly an energy source. But sugar is in fact the opposite of nutrition. Sugar strips the body of vitamins and minerals, which causes things like osteoporosis and tooth decay. It decreases gut health and increases uh, irritable bowel syndrome. It causes inflammation, which, ca which is associated with all other kinds of uh, damage to the body. This little picture says cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, lung cancer, arthritis, psoriasis, injury, infection, Crohn's disease, diabetes, the list goes on and on and on. And overall consumption of sugar accelerates the aging process. Now sugar can be directly linked to high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's in women, dementia in women, psoriasis, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, arthritis, osteoporosis, fatty liver disease, and a whole lot more that we just don't have the data to directly link sugar. Um, sugar in most cases is not the cause of all of these conditions. However, in many cases, sugar is almost always present. So that's something to keep in mind. And let's not forget the plastic that the sugar comes in. Plastic is equally as detrimental to human health as the sugar itself. Plastics contain endocrine disruptors linked to breast cancer, thyroid cancer, prostate cancer, infertility, diabetes, obesity, asthma, lower IQ, and ADHD. A endocrine disruptor is a uh, essentially a synthetic molecule that acts like a hormone and as it flows through the human body, it disrupts our hormonal balance, which throws everything out of whack on a, a chemical hormonal level. And these are in low doses. These are very, very uh, chronic doses that happen over a lifetime. This is not something that happens from one meal. This is something that happens concurrently 
over many, many, many years. And, but the effects of it build up until eventually they become a problem. So according to the Center for Disease Control, six out of 10 American adults suffer from chronic disease. Four out of 10 suffer from two or more chronic diseases. And many of the, these diseases are preventable. You're looking at this data, which suggests that more than half of the population of the United States suffers from a preventable condition. This is ridiculous. What's the point of all this? Too many sick people can overwhelm the healthcare system and bog down vital infrastructure that is necessary for an urban community to function properly. We saw this with the COVID pandemic. Too overwhelmingly, 89% of COVID hospitalizations were linked to four pre-existing conditions, which were high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. These are all preventable diseases brought on with poor lifestyle choices. So, diabetes. According to 2018, diabetes costs the national economy $327 billion annually. Obesity costs $160 billion annually. And these diseases are just getting more expensive. Every year, chronic diseases and the medical costs associated, also the loss of productivity for people calling in sick from work, cost our nation $4 trillion annually. And again, these costs are going up. Chronic diseases also alienate people from society. Here's a quote. The onset of chronic illness represents an assault not only on the person's physical self, but also on the person's sense of identity, calling into doubt the person's self-worth. Loss of confidence in the body leads to loss of confidence in social interaction. This may be especially relevant within modern culture with its dualistic emphasis on the affirmation of ordinary life as well as on life planning. And depressed people engage in risky behavior. 30% of people diagnosed with clinical depression engage in risky behavior, such as drug abuse, reckless endangerment, assault, careless spending, vandalism. Let's, let's not forget suicide. So the result is excess sugar in the diet leads to overburdened healthcare systems, chronic disease, alienated members of society, risky and antisocial behavior, and $4 trillion that could be used for something else. $4 trillion is a lot of money. We can use that to make better roads. We can use that to redo the bridges, to, I don't know, build more, build more housing. Oh, can you imagine what $4 trillion could do? I can't. So the whole point of this is, at the very foundation of society, in my opinion, the individual is in an existential crisis. Sugar is creating a disconnect between people and the greater community around them. So how can we as a society function as a, in this state? How can, how can we expect to grow if the foundation of society, the individual, is in a free fall? If 60% of our nation is sick and dying, who are we building our infrastructure for? If we want to make a more sustainable and a more socially just future, we need to take this issue into account. Otherwise, we're just going to be building, wheel, we're just going to be building motorized wheelchair ramps for everybody to go everywhere because they won't be able to walk anywhere. That's a stretch. We don't know if that's going to happen or not. The point is that we need to start taking better care of individual people before we start planning on making grandiose plans for the future of urban development. Thank you.